So welcome to Roxy Ballet's video cast. And today we have our two professional dancers, Pina and Christina. And we also have a very special guest, um, Stephen K. Stone, who is a wonderful dance educator, dancer, actor, singer, um, director, <laughs> choreographer, <laughs> and also my best friend. So <laughs> um, we welcomed him today because Stephen and I both um, choreographed Frankenstein together for both Fort Wayne Ballet and Roxy Ballet. So I will turn it over to Stephen and let him sort of jump in. I am an associate professor at the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. Um, I, I am going into my 10th academic year. And like most organizations, um, right around Wednesday, March the 11th, may have been Thursday, March the 12th for us. I can't remember exactly when the university um, decided that we were going to move completely online. And as we dancers, performers, athletes, physical beings in a big open space and lots of creativity know teaching dance as a content online is a challenge. <laughs> Most, yeah, to, to say the very least, this will come as a news flash to nobody. Anyway, um, but the thing of it is, is a big open space and a smooth, usable floor are essential. I mean, it's almost like sound, uh, live accompaniment, music, that sort of becomes a, a, a second tier concern and a mirror is like absolutely uh, optional, not necessary at all anymore just that big open space. So um, the logistics, the timeline that we had was, so that's the 11th and 12th, Wednesday and Thursday of March this year. And we only had Thursday and Friday class before we were due to go to ACDA, which of course got canceled. And then the next week was spring break. So instead of going to ACDA, um, I spent my spring break mandated by the university to revise all of my syllabi to show um, a solid plan and a calendar and rationales for how I was gonna do this online after spring break, which was five more weeks of class technique and improvisation and rehearsal and all, definitely performances have to be live and in person, so how are we going to do this? Uh, yeah, I was thinking that like, um, like Christina, you and Melissa, and even Pina, you all like kicked in as well, like at Roxy, like it was like you guys had to turn around and just say, how are we going to teach all these kids at home, mm -hmm. you know, through the screen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it was very new and we had to figure out even the spacing, like what kind of exercises can you do at home when you don't have a big space and the floor is what it is. Some of us could maybe buy a little piece of um, dance floor, but most of the students had like a carpet or then a really very wooden floor mm -hmm. so or point work that's, that doesn't really work. So then you have to figure out how do you keep up the point technique when you can't really point. Or, or how do you keep up your chumps um, when you can't really, when you don't have a good floor to jump in or you don't have space to do a crunch of days in your living room. So it was definitely a, a different type of a challenge, you mm -hmm. know, to figure out how to plan the process. So what are some of the things that you did? Because I know you worked a lot. <laughs> you worked very hard at like really coming up with creative solutions for your classes. First, me and my two dance colleagues had a discussion. What are you planning to do? What are you thinking of doing? And we all sort of took our own approach so that the students didn't get inundated with a, a an, an army of teachers asking them to do a bunch of the same kind of things. Mm -hmm. Of the three professors, I um, desired being synchronous and moving as much as possible 
So at first for myself, because my apartment, even though I love it, there are no big spaces at all. And it's almost all carpets. So I intentionally stayed home to, to for the first time in my life, be dancing in a place like this, where if I sent my arm out, I'd break my finger on a bookshelf. Or if I sent my toe out, I'd break my finger on the corner of a fireplace, break my toe on the corner of a fireplace. Um, so, um, but after a while, once I felt like I understood the confines there, then I moved back into the studio on campus and moved bigger and moved more and did more stuff than just bar or stationary things. And even, even though at that point in mid-March, we had done some of our online projects that exist outside of the classroom, uh, we revised the syllabus in an intermediate level college ballet class to sort of go toward the same objectives for each of the projects, but, but make it an online version. For example, um, in addition to having bar almost every day, a, a lot of times, especially at first, we just had conversation to check in and share what was happening with each other, which sometimes was really difficult conversations to have, but, but, but we as a group, me as a class leader, felt like um, it, you just have to acknowledge the humanity. But for example, our final project was to be an informal performance in our studio for an invited audience at the end of the semester, but that couldn't happen, so we changed it to a research project where we collectively built a video database of high-level professional performances in the ballet genre. And incidentally, in an intermediate jazz class, we were going to do the same kind of parallel assignment, but the students felt more um, adventurous in that genre and asked me to consider a handful, maybe five or six alternative assignments. And we landed on what we called superstar videos where they made videos to some song, whatever song they liked, but they were the star of the video. And so it enlisted their camera skills and movement skills and theme skills and costuming and, and location and, it just really turned out to be so interesting. And then one other um, thing that we did because we combine our intermediate and two upper level ballet and the same of modern on Fridays, because we couldn't be in the studio at all, we thought, well, what can they do? So we created this daisy chain of all of our intermediate and advanced level students where each week they created a video, just a one minute video of them either uh, performing or performing choreography or in some way moving in a video that had something to do with the relationship between whoever their daisy chain partner was that week. And some of, some of these one to three minute videos are, are beautiful, exquisite pieces of art. That's amazing and that's a lot of work. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's, um, well, not a similar thing, but with our students, um, I asked them to film a piece of choreography that I had created for them, and then I made a little video presentation of that, and it's really cool how you can use the technology together with the, your choreography and make it look like a, a piece of art, like a different one than what it would be on stage. It's a different experience, but you can be very creative with it by the way you edit it and where you film it, like depending on the location and everything. Yes, I hear you. It's all about keeping engagement. When this world, this online world that we know has existed in other content areas for a number of years now, but actors, dancers, you know, singers, we haven't gravitated toward mm -hmm. fully online instruction because we need to be in person. So you, you bring up a good point and jogs my brain over to another area that has very recently risen to the surface for me, and that is 
all of the information that I'm receiving here right before the semester when the university system in the state has to make a decision about whether or not um, classes will be in person and the, 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 all of the documentation that is coming my way via email or NDEO or new national standards for dance or all kinds of um, articles uh, about teaching in our content areas in a studio in, in um, engaged activity that, that involves hyper moisture droplet action and activity through the lungs and how to deal with this and I'm so thankful to have all of this information coming my way but I'm also finding that to truly swim through all of that information and all of those recommendations it's a whole new um, action plan of uh, being or getting yourself prepared and designing things that really can be safe because um, I don't know about you all but and I would certainly love to hear what you and Roxy are doing and thinking in terms of you feeling safe because things that we've been thinking about doing are among our three and possibly four if we configure the four space is zooming three spaces while the actual instruction and a few students are in the main space and everyone else is doing class in the other studios and spaces and leaving doors open if possible on good weather days and having fans that pull the air out of the room and just various ways to approach that. What, what are you all doing? At, I guess both as an organization and any ideas or approaches that you have individually. Well, we have this machine. I don't know what's the name of the machine that Mark is using. It's a, it's almost like a, a jetpack backpack kind of thing, and he has like this disinfectant um, liquid, or liquid that he mixes with water, and then at the end of the day, we spray down everything. The studios, everything. Um, but I mean, what we're doing. I mean, students have to wear masks throughout the entire day, which, you know, it's a six hour day. So it's, you know, it's a long time to be wearing it, but you know, they've been really good about it. Um, we yeah. Temperature check before they come in. I mean, we have marked spaces on the ground, six feet apart at the bar, at the well. bars as well. Um, but you know, we are going ahead and doing uh, a made for television nutcracker. And so we're putting together safety protocols for that and what, know what we're going to do and of course we're going to have to rework choreography it's going to be a smaller cast you know yeah, certain no sharing things. costumes yeah so yeah. so yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm repeating about that tonight actually yes, so we're what having everything that you bring up is very like pertinent because tonight we're actually supposed to have a discussion about safety protocols and and give suggestions and solutions and try to just sort of troubleshoot to decide like you know what could be an issue or what could be a problem or and how can we video like how can we video this with the fewest amount of people in the space possible that's something that we have to think creatively about as you know keeping people safe but as well as trying to make it aesthetically pleasing to the costume and the and and I think time like really being clear about and Pina and Christina are great about this, but um, really being clear about like, okay, you know, we have this hour to film this scene, you know, then we need like 15, 20 minutes to clean the studio and, or, and get these people out or get the next people. So I think like for us, as far as the video goes, we're gonna have to be so specific about time. Yeah. yeah. And, and when things happen and, and realistically how long they're going to take. You right. know, if they're taking too long, we need to let make people go outside or give them a break, you know, like, so I feel like it's going to, it's, it's going to be fun, I think, and interesting, but it's also going to be, we're going to have to be very flexible. Roxy Ballet was founded in 1995 by Mark and Melissa Roxy to deliver artistic and cultural excellence by bringing high quality performances to patrons as an all-inclusive organization 
fostering a creative environment of growth for artists of all levels and to preserve and advance the fine art of dance for generations to come. Roxy Ballet fulfills our mission by creating, producing, and performing choreography, formally teaching dance through our affiliated school, and providing highly acclaimed arts education in schools and social service settings. Roxy Ballet is building bridges through dance through its commitment to customizing programs to the specific needs, capacities, audiences, and desired outcomes of our engagements. We thank you for your patronage. I'm actually excited about this, what I anticipate to be next little phase of performance with masks on. Um, I'm doing, for the third year, participating in this local um, fundraiser. It's the Children's Tumor Foundation. And in Little Rock, it, this is the 13th year of a dance contest. It's called Dancing with Our Stars. And it's local, higher profile people paired with a professional dancer. So whereas um, the, the last two years I've done um, uh, duets that had a lot of close contact and partnering this year, my, my partner for this year and I are staying socially distanced and the event, which normally is in a ballroom with hundreds and hundreds of people is actually not going to happen that way the, the dances are going to be video captured two days before the event, and then the event is gonna be streamed live online. But the approach that my partner and I are taking is so far all of our rehearsals have been via Zoom. And um, that makes me feel great because she has a son who sometimes is babysat by the grandmother and I just want as little contact as possible, although we obviously are going to have to rehearse in person soon. But um, in our con costume design, we're going to go ahead and make it very clear that the mask is a part of the costume design. And what excites me about that is that when these videos are watched in the future, it's going to be a stamp of remembrance about this time. And that's going to be so important to help people remember because we all know and we all see it in various ways in this world that those who do not remember the past, you know, are bound to repeat history. Yes. So, and are there some positive, um outcomes you feel like in as far as dance you know and and the world from this and oh yeah it harkens me back to twyla tharp's the 100s what was that maybe postmodern late 60s early 70s the span of years that those things happened and i'm like whereas the purist in me is like no i want tights on and ballet shoes and bar and center but what if we've got our down jacket on and some sneakers and we're doing Tom of a Feigli side soda shot through the pavilion in the middle of campus? Um, like use the street of Lambertville as the backdrop for, you know, the, the a scene or something, you know, like can't we just film some of this outside and just wear like really pretty coats? <laughs> I don't know. Even, even though I was only there, what? almost two weeks. I just thought it was a beautiful little community. Beautiful. And, and I had never seen, is it the Delaware, Delaware yeah. River? Yes. Yeah, I mean, I had never seen it and I was, yeah, there are rivers everywhere, but I'm like, that one's historic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, George Washington crossed it. I'm finding that people either have a very clear understanding of the effect of the arts and entertainment in helping lift our spirits and giving us lights at the end of our end of our tunnels to to help us make it through this but then there are others who it, it's not in their purview 
as a norm to see how art affects our lives every day and all the time. It's a, uh, this could be a good thing if we're always out and people are always seeing us and there's a, a new way uh, like for example if we're teaching class outside then so many more people are going to end up seeing that than if we're in the studio or if uh if you did do a, a performance or a video capture session beside the the river people are going to see that so it 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 could be a good thing, uh, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so too. There's, a, of course, a lot of people who never went to see ballet or any type of dance to the theater, just because you have to buy the ticket and go to the theater. Yeah, I mean, being in quarantine really forced us to have more of an online presence. We were doing lives almost every day, either inside or outside, and just like we were always our goal was to just always stay relevant, you know what I mean? So that kind of forced us into just like always filming or posting and like everything like that, which, you know, every, we were getting a lot more engagement online and yes. which I thought was good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I, th yeah, like you said, performing outside, then people are actually going to see right. it. Right. Oh, they're more likely to see it. And then hopefully, they get more interested in the arts and then once we're finally back in the theater then they will come to the theater right. and watch it there as well yeah um, but I, I agree with you I, and we have touched on it a few times maybe that staying relevant and um, as Lise and I talked about in a previous discussion keeping our students and our audience engaged is is a challenge you know, it's it's different now than being on the proscenium and you buy the ticket and sit there and watch us and then we all have a reception and go our separate ways and it's like, yeah, the model's gonna change for a while. Mm -hmm. Talking about creativity, uh, my intermediate students, y you know, Zooming a bar three times a week can become a lot of the same thing, so, we were in one of our conversations one day, it was like, what can we do to shake this up? And one of my students said, I've always wondered what it would be like to take a jazz-based ballet class. Would you teach us a jazzy ballet class? And I said, give me some days to prepare <laughs> this. But so what I did was started with Ken Burns series of jazz and and boiled it down to a spotify list and then reorganized it in terms of okay this feels like a plie and this feels like a tondu and this and organized my music which was totally not ballet and then i let this music drive each exercise okay this is a jeté pas de cheval exercise what does this music make me do with it and it ended up scaring me and ultimately making me so excited that I'm like, I want to develop a new genre of ballet and go on <laughs> like this world tour of teaching jazzy ballet. <laughs> Real story. So, so yeah, um, when you least expect it and sometimes in the scariest of ways, it can really push you to like be inventive. 